Okay, I'm gonna like go into trance and I'll tap in, like Saint Germain will tap into your viewers or your listeners' energy frequencies and then he'll channel based on um, where they're vibrating at. So a lot of people that listen to like a podcast, like a certain podcast or a YouTube channel, it's the group is usually vibrating around the same vibration. Mm -hmm. So then um, he'll just pick one or two questions uh, and he'll start channeling from there. Hey, beautiful souls, Guy here. Welcome to my podcast. And my beautiful guest today is Tara Arnold. I've literally just got back from our four day live and flow retreat here in northern New South Wales, where we spent uh, four days with 34 beautiful souls going inward. And uh, I must admit, I'm very tired when recording this. So if everything I share with you right now makes no sense, uh, please forgive me anyway. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make sure the podcast schedule continues as normal. Uh, Tara is a beautiful soul and she channels St. Germain. What can I say? And uh, there's a really beautiful theme that came through this uh, podcast today. And uh, if you hang around towards the end of the podcast, she actually does a live channel in there of St. Germain as well. Where, of course, when I ask um, what would you like to share after everything we covered today, if you listen to my podcast regular, you know that's a regular question anyway fascinating conversation i'm sure if you're listening to this uh you're open to these conversations and ultimately one thing that keeps running true through all the retreats we ran through the podcast through conversations like this is that you know uh we get what we focus on the world can certainly seem chaotic ugly full of fear and depending on what you tune into but the reality is there's so many uncontrollables beyond ourselves in that and if we start to look inward and start to heal our own wounds and start to dive deep into ourselves um, and it's amazing how much that can actually heal ourselves heal our bodies heal our emotions thoughts everything that come with it and uh and really lean into love and uh, that's what i'm all about these days getting these messages out here anyway i'm starting to waffle i'm gonna uh have a sauna i think and uh, take it easy anyway much love enjoy this conversation with tara let me know what you think Tara, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Guy. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm. I'm very excited to see where this conversation goes today. It's you know, it's I find it always fascinating. I've mentioned it many on the times on the podcast before, but when we get to chat before we hit the record button as well, there's so many things that can come out, and and it gets me excited of what uh, is going to present itself today. So, um, thank you, and I, I deeply appreciate it. So the first question I got for you is, which I ask everyone, is if a complete stranger sat next to you at a dinner party and they asked you what you did for a living, how would you respond? Um, I would say that I, well, it depends on the person sitting beside me and where they're vibrating at. So if it was somebody that would be, very deep in 3D, then I would explain it a little bit different. If it's somebody that's more awake, um, I just tap into their vibration and read their energy and then answer uh, to where they would understand. So if it was somebody that was in on their awakening journey, I'd say, oh, I am a channeler and I uh, have a YouTube channel. I do um, channel the Ascended Masters. And if it was somebody that was new to it, I would say that I was an intuitive uh, reader and then explain what that is if they asked me, <laughs> you know. So I just kind of yeah. like instead of um, some like, yeah, just reading their energy first and then answering from there. Yeah, it's always a challenging one. And that's why I love to ask it at the beginning, because then, you know, it, the it's very hard to to put into description and words exactly until you know the person's on decided to step onto the path for themselves that's for sure i'm yes. i'm curious is there's two things that that are intriguing me there um one is do you find people most people are open 
to your work if you do share? Yeah. Yeah, I do. If they're very deep in third dimension, I just say, oh, I work online and I just leave it. <laughs> I leave it at that. So there's like the three levels of frequencies that I'll tap into. I'm like, okay, are they, you know, the people that are kind of curious, I'd say, oh, I do intuitive readings. And then they're usually would ask me more about that. And then you could tell they're interested, but just not quite sure. Um, yeah, yeah. And then. Yeah, with- I'm curious as well to to ask you this question, even for mm-hmm. my own um, uh, inquisitiveness. Is you mentioned ascended masters, and we hear that term thrown around a lot, um, right. especially as we move into you know th- th- this kind of realm of work. How would you describe if somebody doesn't know who or what the ascended masters are? How would you describe them? Well, the ascended masters have been on the planet earth. So they have had their journey. They understand human emotions and they have awakened to remembering who they are as consciousness, like when they were on the planet. And so therefore they ascended um, back to what we all come from, which is, you know, this path to ascension. And so they then become like spiritual leaders or guides for people on the planet. And they understand the human emotions So they can help us, you know, while we're dealing with our dark nights of the soul or whatever struggles that our perception of struggles are at the time. And like archangels or angels, they don't come onto the planet, so they don't get caught up in the human emotions. They can say, here's where you are. Here's where you need to be. Here's how to get there. And where the Ascended Masters will help you transmute those that dark back to light because they've lived it they know the frequencies and so they will bring you opportunities to experience the deepest darkness so that you can transmute that and now know the polarity of that in light because when we are all that is like before we put on this human costume and come on to the planet um then we are all like divine love and consciousness. So how do we know what we are if we have nothing to compare it to? So putting on this human costume and playing the game of the polarities, we can find out, you know, what compassion is by experiencing the opposite of it, you know? So it's about, so the Ascended Masters kind of like, to me, like, it's what I was raised with is what you feel comfortable with is what you're drawn to, for your your guides to channeling. So they always tell me it's not our reality, it's your reality. So you choose your spirit guides like you choose your friends on planet Earth. So what I'm comfortable with, I was raised Catholic. So Jesus, Mother Mary, those energies were very familiar to me, like saints, um, you know, whatever I was interested in as a child uh, and what my upbringing was when the guides come and start to to work with you they know what you're comfortable with and what feels safe to you so i created in my reality the ascended masters basically because that's what i felt safe with um i also was scared to get in trouble by my parents or the catholic church or friends or people who would judge me um And so I couldn't really just start channeling Jesus in public because, you know, what would that would be blasphemy with the church. And, you know, so I just didn't have the courage. And that's when St. Germain showed up. And so St. Germain isn't associated with the Catholic Church. So I was like, oh, I can channel him and feel comfortable. But every time I channel him, Jesus and Buddha come in at the same time. And what they show me, it's like Jesus and Buddha were uh, a few of the spiritual leaders for the Piscean age and St. Germain's one of the spiritual leaders for the Aquarian age. So when he comes in, it's like they all come in together. And then as I'm channeling, they'll bring through frequencies through different chakras. So I might be translating through like St. Germain, but then Jesus is bringing through frequencies for the heart chakra for maybe somebody like one of the viewers or the interviewer or, you know, whoever's sitting in front of me, a client, um, a family member, somebody working at the grocery store, they'll bring in frequencies and I can see them come in. I can feel them like coming through my chakras. 
And then they just show me that that person's receiving to their chakras and it just changes fears back to love or dark back to light. And, uh, yeah, so that's how I work with them. And that's wow. how they appeared to me is, is, um, you know, they showed up as friends and said, you know, we want you to view us as friends. And so anybody that's looking into getting into channeling, it's just like, what is comfortable for you? And, you know, it's, it's your reality. It's not spirits. Like, who do you resonate with? As long as your heart centered intention, then they'll come, like they'll come and connect with you. So don't be afraid to, to reach out to them and tell them that you'd like to connect with them. They'll show wow. up. Yeah, that, thank you. That's the key, isn't it? The heart-centered intention. I, I think that's the, the crux of the work right there. You know, it's, it's fascinating listening to you talk and my, my old self would be like, are you nuts? Like you're talking about archangels, guides, spirit guides, ascended masters. Yeah. You, you know, my, my Welsh rugby playing valley boy in me had zero idea of any of this exists. Not even with any, I didn't even have any religious infrastructure. But right. th th there's always been a pull to something deeper. And I, and I think that's the calling in us all, isn't it? What is it? That's beyond the mind. Right. What's our heart want to share? And, you know, I've created a life for myself where, you know, I, I, I hold space for a lot of people and feel different energies constantly, which I, it's undeniable. It's unquestionable. In my reality, it's extremely real then, hence why. I'm always love talking to people like yourself because, you know, you have a deep understanding of, of this work. And I think it's important that we stretch our imagination and allow ourselves to be open to possibility with it all. My question to you is then, do you, you mentioned ascension a couple of times, you know, there's ascended masters and then our own ascension. Do you think that's the name of the game as a human? Yeah, it's like what I channeled about it. Um, it's just, they show me, it's like we come and put on this human costume. And then the game is to, um, like experience the journey, not to get to the finish line because we already know what the finish line is. So the spirit loves to experience and play with frequencies and, and transmute and feel frequencies that it isn't. So these, deepest darkest polarities that we can tap into the spirit gets excited and there's so many people they're like i can't believe my journey on planet earth is so stressful and so struck like so much struggle and you know it's the ones that choose the hardest lives are the ones that have um been most expanded they've had more lifetimes on planet earth and they are you know, evolved souls, like some people would say. Um, I mean, we're all equal. There's no level, but it's like they've played the game so many times. It's like, can I go to the deepest darkness? Um, because I've already done those other lifetimes of that darkness. I want to go even deeper because the more deeper you go, the more you expand your consciousness and the, the more that you'll know the polarity of that. So if you're in like grade one and somebody pushes you on the playground, now you know what it feels like to have your feelings hurt. Maybe you get physically hurt and then you learn compassion. You're like, oh, I don't want to do that to another person because that really hurt my feelings and you felt that depth of pain. So now you know that level to match that depth of pain. You know the polarity of that in light so you know the compassion for that so each time you have a, another layer you go deeper into a deeper darkness so you can know that the exact opposite of it in light and learn a deeper compassion and then so maybe in grade four or five you know somebody breaks your heart they break up with you your boyfriend or girlfriend and now you know a deeper pain it's like oh this hurts way more than getting pushed on the playground. So now once you transmute that, that pain or that grief within you, you go to a deeper frequency of the light. Um, and then within each like struggle or suffering that we have, and then we transmute it within us, that frequency goes out to all the universe. So it just, it's floating around there. Uh, people can download it from you. It's like, you know, we walk around um, with these frequencies that we've transmuted within ourselves from the pain we've gone through. So maybe 
you're sitting in a mall and you have had a loss of a spouse or a loss of a parent and you've transmuted that grief. You've been crying for a year. You know, you're feeling pretty good now. And somebody walks in the mall and they just found out their father passed away. They can start downloading from you what you've already transmuted so that they can start their healing. So some people are like, I'm tapping into your audience's uh, questions right now. And there's some, there's a lot of people asking, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? Like, why am I here? And there's so many things you're do, doing on a deeper soul level that it's so much that you're offering that you don't even realize how much you're changing the world just by being who you are and going through your experiences. So what you've transmuted within yourself, it's like, what I see, it's like a grid, it goes out it's about 300 kilometers. It's like it goes out and we're all kind of placed. There's like first wave light workers, second wave light workers, third wave light workers. And it's like all the light workers are placed in this grid that's like equal, like distance apart. And it forms this huge grid all over the planet. And it's like every time you transmute dark back to light within yourself, by, you know, loving the one who's hurting or, you know, working with the emotions that are coming up, then that goes out within that 300 kilometer distance, people can start to download it. And you don't have to do anything because that's the question that's coming up right now. It's like, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? And it's like, just find joy and fun and raise your vibration and, and focus on that more focus on your passions and playing because that expands your consciousness and then just lead with that. And that'll take mm -hmm. you where you're supposed to be rather than, you know, having to do something like getting the ascended masters are saying like, get in the vibration of joy within yourself and then everything else will follow after that. You're going to run into your passions, ask your inner child, like, what did I like to do as a child? Because how you played as a child gives you a lot of information of what your passion is um, and what your soul came to do in this lifetime, like for, for not only work, but like for your journey, like how you changed careers, uh, guy, you changed careers, like went from one extreme to the other. And um, so you'll find it, but not focusing on the purpose, but just focus on what will bring me joy. And then, hmm. then the purpose will come, but you already are like, there's somebody that's listening. It's like, they're there. It's you're already doing the work because you're doing it within yourself. And that's going out to a lot of people. Like you go to the grocery store and you're bringing a frequency that that person, maybe they're suicidal or something, the cashier, and you talk to them for a few minutes and spirits guiding your words and you just change their perception with a couple of words and they download from you and they have a total different perception and they don't harm themselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's, it's no, I, I'm just nodding, nodding away here as you, as you talk, like my old mentor would always say to me, follow your enthusiasm. It will never let you down. And, right. and I just love that. Right. But, but but what I see all the time, you know, and I'm still guilty of it. It's not. It's not like I, I still have plenty of human traits that um, I'm working on. But you, you know, the, the 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 saying I can't remember who said it, but um, the, the 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 problem that's created can't be solved by the same level of mind that created it in the first place. And we always go to the we always go to the mind to try and fix things and push against things and ask these questions and constant, constant, constant. And it's so challenging to get to the being level, which for me is, is heart wisdom and allowing that, that connection and flow through because it feels so foreign for us because we don't get taught it really in this fast paced Western life. Right. Right. How in your, through your experiences and working with many people, I know you used to do one-on-one -on -one things like that. How do we make that journey down? Is it as simple as just finding your joy? Do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's fine. Connecting with your inner child is the, the biggest um, thing because it, it, when you're going from a third dimension reality, moving into a fifth dimension reality on your 
spiritual journey or awakening journey, the inner child has the key to joy because the inner child, the he, she, or they uh, have the f- frequencies, um, like they're, they're in fifth dimension already. So the inner child's the aspect of us that remains young so we can experience joy and awe and wisdom. And so the inner child says, if you want to um, have a fifth dimension reality, then I am going to be the one that brings in the joy for that. So you have to ask me permission because this is my game. So it's the inner child's game and that's where you'll find that joy. So if you ask permission, like before I do anything, I ask my inner child permission. Like if I wake up in the morning and I'm like, good morning, happy birthday. Like every day, you know, every day is our birthday party and we're going to celebrate. And what do you want to do for joy today? And then even if you can't visualize your inner child, just Mm -hmm. um, how does it feel? Like, do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to you know, come to work with me or do you want to stay home while I go to work or, you know what I mean? Like you just check in with them. And then if they're feeling respected, cause we didn't get respected as children. So if they feel respected, then they're going to bring you a joy that you haven't felt yet on planet earth. Cause they bring it up from the heart, the back of the heart. And it just comes out like it's delicious. And so it's like, Oh, okay. So if I keep checking with the inner child, she'll show me whether this is a good thing or whether it's not so good. Like, and then you, you just get guided by that. And that's where you find that divine joy. It's like they have the key. Um, and it's just reconnecting. And then you get this new best friend. And because as you're awakening, you like, yeah. oh, of all your third dimension friends and family and everything anyway. Um, and that's all you need. So it's it, as you're deconstructing the ego. It's going in and, t- and giving a new story to the inner child. Oh, I'm sorry that I told you we needed our parents to love us. You were more than enough. I just didn't know you were in here. Now that I know you're here, then you're more than enough. I don't need anybody outside me to love me. And so then the inner child says, oh, really? And you're like, yes, that's all I needed. And she's like, so we don't have to beg for our parents to love us anymore. We don't have to like bend and do things that we don't like to do to please others, to seek validation outside ourselves. Like, no, you're more than enough. And then move your inner child up to the year 2023 so they don't keep reliving the pain from the past. And it's all visualization. At first, the belief isn't there, you know, like that there's this, you know, inner child. But then all of a sudden, you'll be visualizing your inner child and they'll show you something that you didn't visualize. Then the belief will be there because you're like, oh, like I didn't give them that toy to play with. Like, why are they holding a doll? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like they're trying to give you a message. So that's you channeling your inner child, just like you would channel your higher self. It's, It's just an aspect. The inner child's an aspect of your spirit. So, yeah, so yeah. that's like, um, I forget what your the question was, but it was like to, to find that joy. It's like in fifth dimension, if you're moving and expanding your consciousness, you're, you're going to want to include that inner child because they have the key to it. Right. Yeah, it's beautiful. No, it, I, I, I'm, because we get so, like, I know I'm just speaking from my own experience. We get so goal oriented. When I get this, I will be happy when I earn this and do these and things and, and, doing exactly what you said and playing with that we're, we're much more present aren't we we're much more in the moment and it right. allows us to really like because you right at the beginning of the podcast you said it's about the journey not the destinations we all know where we're going right you know, like, well there's an end point some stage so <laughs> why are, you know why aren't we truly and it doesn't mean we have to do wild and wacky things or, or anything but just actually just soaking up those moments but of course underneath all that there's those elements that that, um wanting to be heard acknowledged and healed and brought to our awareness so we can transcend that to be more present in our moments right good question so with i I just uh, debate which direction to go in here um but with your own journey then was there um in, in a child needing to be healed, was there a dark night of the soul, or, or have you just tra- moved beautifully fr- through your life into channeling and working with people to this day? 
<laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's a couple dark nights of the soul. Okay. Um, you know, a, a rough childhood, and but th that's the thing because if you're going to be doing work like that, like we're doing, you have to, you know, get get to the nitty gritty to in order to expand your consciousness more because you would have no motivation to. So y y the people that are going through like really, you know, really horrific childhoods and like that's part of your chance, your journey, not your journey. That's part of your um, education or your teaching um, is like going through that. It's like graduating. So it's like, you know, when we go from grade one to 12 and then graduate, it's having really a lot of struggle during childhood. You know that you're going to expand your consciousness more than anyone around you because you're going to be motivated to. You have to get motivated. And the only way to get motivated is if third dimension just isn't working for you. This isn't working. This is not what I signed up for is what a lot of us say. It's like, I don't want the struggle anymore. So if you have an easy, you know, really easy life, you never are motivated to awaken. So, um, yeah. So yeah. I went through a few dark nights of the soul. I, I don't go into the story about them because I like, because it usually a lot of people might perceive it as a victim where I see it as like my biggest gift. Um, uh, but yeah, they were interesting and I appreciate them. And it really forced me to, to leave everything behind and just let go of everything. Huh. So and, yeah, and, it propelled me it just as propelled yours you probably did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's in that moment, isn't it? Why do you feel we, we struggle with, with our ego, that deconstruction of it? You know, oh, to have it, that complete faith and that complete <laughs> surrender to. Yeah, the presence. ego seems to get louder as you begin to waken, but it's, Saint Germain says it's not getting louder, it's you're becoming more aware of it. So as you expand your consciousness, you're more aware of it. And the the reason it seems to get louder is because it, it does not want you to live from your heart. It wants to win. It wants to run the show. So if it knows that you're about to begin your awakening, there's a lot of people that are on their journey and it's like the ego gets so much like more difficult. It's almost like you're being tortured while well, you are being tortured by it because it knows it's about to lose its grip. So the ego is never going to die. It's just going to like float by once you let go of the attachment to it. It just can't win. And I teach like a channeling course and in the course saint germain always says there's three ways the ego is going to come in at the beginning the ego is going to tell you that you're um not important enough to channel the ascended masters so we want you to see us as equal we're your friends like see everyone as equal and you're like and so they're like okay then the ego is gonna say okay now you're not letting me make you inferior i'm gonna come in a different way and tell you that you're superior so i'm gonna say now that you're channeling jesus you're more important than anybody else so when that happens <laughs> the ascended masters will pull back to show you your egos come in this other way to make you superior and then you let that go you're like no no everyone's equal i'm not more important because i'm channeling the ascended masters everyone's equal and then the ego is gonna say okay if you're not gonna let me make you inferior or superior then I'm going to tell you, you need to attach to needing them in order to channel. And now, now you've created an attachment from your ego to needing the ascended masters, but you are awakening to remembering you are everything. So you don't need them to channel. You are the universe. So when that happens, the ascended masters pull back again and they're like, we're showing you your ego's now making you attached to needing us and you don't need us. So that I'm giving that example because that's in every area of our lives. When the, the deconstruction of the ego, why it's so difficult is because it's sneaky. It comes in another way, especially if you're an inferior fed ego or empathic and you're used to always like your ego always takes you somewhere inferior. Once you master that, you're not expecting it to come in and try to make you superior because that's just not 
your normal ego comfort but yeah it'll sneak in there and then and then it comes in another way and makes you attach to something that you've already let go of attachments to like people you let go of all the attachments to your friends and family and now it's making you attached because you're to the ascended masters because you're channeling them so it that's why i think it's so difficult is because it's it's like it's sly it's slick it's it's very um yeah, it yeah. manipulates, you know, and there's three aspects of the ego, like the id, ego, and super ego. And the the ids are you like impulse, three. the id, uh, ego, they... and super ego. So the id's like that impulse control and or instant fa- gratification, all our addictions and everything. It's like we're functioning off that id. And then the ego is like the decision maker. And so the ego says, don't touch the hot stove. And then the super ego says, go ahead and touch the hot stove and see what happens. So the ego will say, you're like, I'm a great channeler. And the super ego will say, no, you're not that good. So sometimes some people's super ego is, is overpowering their ego. And so it's like a constant argument in their head. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because I'm tapping into your audience's frequencies and this is happening to some of you. So the, the way to get the, the, that argument to quiet down in the head is, um, to balance the energies of the id, ego and super ego so that they work in harmony instead of repel each other. So you can do spiritual alchemy. We were talking about that earlier mm-hmm. before we started. So you can, do spiritual alchemy with Saint Germain. Saint Germain is an ascended master. He's working with everyone on the planet that calls him in. And he's wanting to channel with so many people right now because he's one of the spiritual leaders for the Aquarian age. So if he resonates with you, if you come across his name or you see the violet flame in your third eye, that means he's already working with you. It's like the color of violet, like some of you that meditate if you see in that violet, that means St. Germain's working with you and he's giving me chills, showing me that he's gives them chills too. like the people that are um, connecting with him. They might be getting chills right now because he's saying, I'm here, I'm here with you. Um, you can call him in in your higher self and command that you evoke the violet flame of transmutation. And I say the word command because when we command, we evoke the God within us to create our reality or we evoke the universe within us to create our reality. And you command your higher self and Saint Germain evoke the violet flame of transmutation and transmute all dark back to light and fears back to love within the id, ego and super ego. You can write them on a piece of paper because they are it goes by the vibrational frequency of the words and the letters so you just hold them in your hand your subconscious knows how to balance everything in your body so it knows how to balance this and the ascended masters are helping you and you just command that it balance the energy so that the three of those work in harmony and when that happens you'll just feel this calmness in the head it just gets quiet so for some of you who are on your awakening journey and it feels like the ego's louder. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sometimes it's the super egos like, no, I'm going to get very, very loud because I do not want you to awaken. And so it's just commanding that it, it balances and quiets down. Um, you have the power to do that. And then you might find that it, your journey is a little bit easier. Like sometimes I'd have to balance it a couple times a day. Um, Sometimes it's once a week. Sometimes it's once a month. So just intuitively, yeah. Yeah. How, how on your journey then, how did you start to lean into channeling and discern when it was your mind, your ego? Oh, that's a to, good question. You know, when it's actually. Yeah. How do you know source? if it's the ego yeah. or source? That's right. Yeah. Because I have no doubt, because I'm sure you, you would agree that we're all channels at the end of the day. We're all spirit in form. And yes. It's then, so it, at some level, it, it's for all of us. Yeah. So all of us are always channeling at all times. It's just, are we channeling from the head or the heart? So if we're speaking right now, like talking and you're, or you're talking to your mom or you're talking to one of your friends, you're always just channeling the ego. So you're just, 
if you have a fear, like say you're visiting a friend and, you know, somebody knocks on the door and there's nobody there and you guys start to create this fear that, you know, you're getting attacked by some man that's outside the house that isn't probably even there. Um, what happens is you start to channel in the frequency that matches that that's like all over the universe or all over the planet. So anybody else on the planet that is having that similar frequency of fear, when they're having it, it goes out to the, the, like it just floats out there in the, on the planet. It's like the ego consciousness. And as you're getting a more and more fear, you start channeling and tapping in to everybody else's fear that matches that. And then so it, it turns into a big snowball. By the time, you know, a few hours have passed, you're calling the police saying there's somebody out there. We're scared. Like it just snowballs. So you just start channeling in the fear that you are. You can only channel from where you're vibrating at. So if you have fear and you're going to go connect with the ascended masters, but you still have all these fears of ghosts or dark entities, then you're going to create that to reflect your fear. So you might create a ghost that scares you and you're like, oh, I thought it was, you know, you know, I was trusting. But have you, you know, have you transmuted all those fears from your past lifetimes? Like, don't get frustrated if you're on your channeling journey and you're having fears come up. That's normal. It's just showing you that you haven't transmuted um, the judgment around channeling that we have from our past lifetimes yet. Mm. So it'll get to the point where you have no fear left. So uh, like for me, it's, I'm not able to channel anything fear-based. It's not possible because I don't have any fear with it, but I did at one point and I would have like ghosts scare me and stuff. So um, it just depends on how much fear you have and how do you know whether like when you do start channeling from your heart, how do you know if it's the, ego or the heart is that as you're channeling, if there's fear behind your words or judgment behind your words, it's coming from the ego. Like source, divine source energy has no judgment and no fears. So if there's anything like, you know, if you listen back, if you record yourself and then you listen back and there's anything in there of judgment or fear, you'll know, oh, okay, maybe I pulled in the ego a little bit. But the, the, Ascended masters, if you're channeling them, they don't care if you channel from the ego. All they need you to do is not doubt that you're channeling. If you do not doubt, then they can join you. And huh. how you'll know you're channeling them is all of a sudden you're going to say something that's really profound, something you'll use words that you've never used before. You'll say sentences in a sentence structure that you don't normally put words in a sentence structure. And then you'll say, that wasn't me. And then you'll know that that's your truth. And everyone's channels from their truth. Everyone's truth is different. So everyone's channeling from where they're vibrating at. So if you're vibrating an ego, then that's your truth in that moment. Just don't judge it. So they don't want you to give up. The more you just don't doubt, you just say, okay, I'm going to put the intention that I go channel and whatever comes out, as soon as you put the intention, then that's part of your channeling. And if you don't doubt and you trust that you're connecting with the divine, the divine will come in. And then all of a sudden you'll know because of what I just said, it'll, it'll come out different. You'll sound different. It'll sound profound. And you'll say, wow, that was information I didn't know, you know, so. And it'll rock your world. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's got a different truth. So it's just like we're all vibrating somewhere different and I'm not fully awake. Like I'm on my awakening journey, but mm -hmm. I still am deep in the ego if I'm not channeling. So it's just don't get frustrated. Like we're all on this journey together. You're not alone. And yeah. Do you find your body gets tired and from that energy that comes through or have you found it's like doing reps at the gym your, your body adapts and then you can handle more weight or more yes. energy. I'm just using my old fitness. Yes, that's exactly it. That's that you just channeled that. That's exactly it. So at the beginning, when Ascended Master St. Germain came in, it was heavy. Like I was, it felt like a thousand pounds. I couldn't even sit up. Wow. And then 
he introduced himself and he said that the reason it's so heavy is because um, my physical body is very dense and it doesn't recognize the divine light, like the physical body's consciousness as well, but it's in this third dimension reality and it has to adjust to the light frequencies. So they just bring in a drop, like a little tiny drop of their frequencies. And then it's like, our physical body has to adjust to it. And each time it gets lighter and lighter. So at first it was very heavy and then it would take like three days to adjust to it. And then I would go practice again and it'd be heavy again. Um, they feel like they're about 20 feet tall and like a thousand pounds is what it feels like. And then, and you can feel like, cause I trans channel, like I can feel their, like how they sit or how they, I can feel how they, their body, like, um, their posture is or uh, their hand movements. Um, so each mm-hmm. one's different wow. depending on who you want to ch- channel. Like if you're channeling someone who crossed over, it, it feels a lot different. So just depending on what amount of light frequency you want to bring in, like the Sendabaster show me they're from a Palladian star system, like 10th dimension. So it just depends on who you want to channel it might feel a little bit different. Um, yeah. If you're scared to, to connect with, you know, maybe a loved one who crossed over, but you really want to connect with them, then just channel Jesus first and have Jesus bring them in and then have Jesus remove them. And then that takes away all fears. Um, if you have fears of, of channeling dark entities, then yeah, start with channeling Jesus first and then have him bring in, um, someone who crossed over and then have the him remove them. And then that removes all the fears. Like your spiritual body will feel safe with that. Your inner child will feel safe with that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So on your journey, then you, you spoke about um, the, the chakras, the energy centers and, and um, sending information or receiving information through them. I can't remember how you framed it. Is that, is that an aspect to it? Um, And, because there's many different types of channeling as well. I believe you just mentioned trans channeling. I think it might be good to clear. Right. Up. So I, I think it depends. Like for me, that was my journey because I was already a healer in the sense, like I did energy healing. So when St. Germain came to me, like I had been putting that out to the universe, like how can I be in service? What can I do? Like I'm ready to do anything. And because I had unwavering faith, because I had been hearing, um, well, it had been Jesus since I was a child. He would speak to me. I just didn't know it was him at the time, but it was like they would speak. It was almost like telepathically. I could hear them like they would tell me like before, I, uh, you know, I was going to have an accident or something. They would give me a warning or, you know, if my grandmother's going to pass away, they'd tell me that she was going to pass away or, you know what I mean? So I always had that. So I never had any, um, like I always had faith. And so it was very easy, like to connect with that. And so I was a nurse. And when I was leaving nursing, I went back to school and became a natural therapist. And then I was doing natural therapy and the, the, um, the ascended master started giving me what was Jesus started giving me messages to give to the client. And I wouldn't, I was like, no way. Like that's no way. (laughs) And he's, and then they stopped my clients and I was like, why are, why don't I have any clients? And they're like, well, if you're not going to give our messages, then we're not going to send the clients. And I said, well, how do I know if they're open to receiving it? And they said, well, we won't give you a message if they're not. I'm like, Oh, okay. So I'd get one client and I get no messages. And then the next client, I would get messages. And the next client, no messages. I'm like, and then I trusted it. I was like, okay, they won't, I'm not going to get attacked here. He's, they're only giving it if the person's open to receiving. So then as they, um, you know, started giving me messages through that, it was when St. Germain came in, he said, here's how we're going to be working through you. And they had, I had first been sitting there um, at like prior to this. Okay. I'll just tell you what happened with him. Okay. So he came in, he said, this is uh, hi, I'm St. Germain. This is how I'm going to be working with you. And I had a client at the time and the client was laying there on the, um, on the bed. And all of a sudden 
Saint Germain like shot uh, divine love like through my heart chakra, and then my client felt it. She's like, "Oh my goodness, like what's mm-hmm. going on with my heart shock, like this area?" And I was like, "Oh, okay, so he shot divine light, and then it went to her. Okay, I, I kind of get this." And then she left, and so I brought my husband in. I was like, "Okay, Saint Germain, can you show me again? Like, how are you going to be working?" <laughs> <laughs> through me like I, I I wasn't quite you know I was you know really wondering like what else would happen you know so and then all of a sudden they came in they shot um freak like divine light through every chakra like every main chakra so seven chakras one at a time and as they were shooting it through my chakras my husband could feel it going through his and I was like oh okay I get it that's how they're going to be working through me, um, they're going to be bringing divine light. And when they go into the chakra, like what I see is they go in because all the past lifetimes are happening now. So it's like now stacked moments. So it's like they go in through the client's chakra, but it goes all the way down into a, like a past lifetime. And they'll go to the deepest one that there's because it's always up to the client what their spirit's ready to receive. So whatever their spirit says, okay, I'm going to see Tara. I'm going to bring to the surface what I want to transmute and let go of. They'll go to the depth of that. So if maybe it's 400 lifetimes ago, they'll go to the root emotion of where it started and then it changes it up through the the rest of the lifetimes to the, to this now moment. Cause all the past lifetimes are happening now anyway. So then it gets transmuted and then it's like they might cry to release or just depending on what chakra it is. Um, they might get really, if it's in the third eye, they might get really hot or something. So it just, they'll feel something different each time. And then, so that's how I, I learned. Now there's many other people channeling that maybe they don't work the same way with their guides maybe they do something a lot different but that's just what i know for them to do and why they're doing it it's just changing dark back to light and to expand somebody's consciousness <coughs> so each time you change the fears back to love or dark back to light within a chakra it expands your consciousness to more love excuse wow. me i keep <coughs> okay. i'm transmuting stuff through the throat chakra obviously <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's fascinating listening to you speak because it my my brain just i can feel it kicking in now and thinking okay so what you're saying as well is then our past lives are actually happening now at multiple levels because beyond 3d consciousness we're in the eternal now right right so everything is happening simultaneously which is hard to wrap our heads around right so, there's no like l- linear time like like we see it as past present and future but the only thing that's happening is now so it's like time's folded space is how like the ascended masters show me it's like like if you went to a psychic 20 years ago um time was sped up because it wasn't um like it's not the same as it is now like time has really sped up like the space has folded (laughs) So it's like you could go to a psychic 20 years ago and they're like, oh, this is going to happen for you in six months. Now it's like everything's changing in this now moment. It's very difficult to predict um, what's going to happen. Like if I do, you know, tap in and, and channel something, it's like the furthest ahead like I can go is maybe three months. Um, like say I'm tapping wow. into like... Mm-hmm the global frequencies or something it's it's not very far ahead um and even that like can change it changes very instantly like in the now moment things are changing depending on the collective energy of everyone on the planet and where their thoughts are and where their emotions are it's changing rapidly um every everything on planet earth yeah and it feels like, a, like, as when I think of past lifetimes and future, like, if it, it feels like a lot of healing <laughs> to, to do, and it can yeah. feel overwhelming sometimes. It's like, oh my god, I don't have shit in my own life, let alone right. looking at my other ones. <laughs> right, you and know? we don't and need it, to. We don't need to go into the past lifetimes. You just need to let it, let it. Just it's coming up when you had your kundalini awakening. It's coming up whether mm. you want it to or not. It's it's coming out. <laughs> 
I, I, I've honestly, and I really wish because we get so attached to the meaning of, oh, this happened and what that happened, and and could it be this and could it be that and and this those things, and I've got to the point where I've just stopped caring and asking, right. and I just let it mm. heal and, and move when it's ready, and I feel the, the the less push I push up against it, like I've had some huge life lessons around my lower back, mm. um, that, that's really sparked that inward healing journey of surrender to that and be much more um, holding space of compassion and love for myself as opposed to the frustration that that backache can bring you know right, and right. it's been a dance that's constantly and every time I just soften and allow it when needed there's been insight and there's been more revelation from it so it's like ah okay I'm, that's I'm nice getting it. <laughs> I, I like how you described it like the dance yeah the dance yeah, of the frequencies. Yeah, sure. yeah. Look to to wrap up the podcast, Tara. How, how do you feel if we ask Saint Germain a question to to tie things up? Sure, sure. Sure. So I'll go into trance and channel. So the, the question I always ask everyone on the show, Tara, that I'd love to ask Saint Germain is that everything that we've covered today, there's been a lot of ground covered. But what would you, what would he like to leave our listeners to ponder on? To okay, finish this podcast. Okay, I'm gonna like go into trance, and I'll tap in like Saint Germain. I'll tap into your viewers or your listeners' energy frequencies, and then he'll channel based on um, where they're vibrating at. So a lot of people that listen to like a podcast, like a certain podcast or a YouTube channel, it's the group is usually vibrating around the same vibration. So then um, he'll just pick one or two questions. Uh, and he'll start channeling from there. Um, like a message that would be maybe most needed or something for this time. So depending on what people's thoughts are. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. Welcome. I am St. Germain. We welcome you. Oh, we are showing our channel. There are many full of worry. They're worried, worried, worried. Race, race, race. I am busy. I am trying to catch up. I am trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. I am all over the place. I am all over the place. I cannot get settled. I cannot I cannot get settled. I cannot get calmed down. I am having anxiety. We are showing our channel. There are many that are having anxiety. They're having difficulty at this time. We are bringing through frequencies in this moment to transmute fears back to love and dark back to light. All that is required is to say that you are open to receiving. We're bringing through frequencies for the crown chakra and third eye to calm the racing mind. We are showing our channel. There are many in the collective. There are many watching or listening to this podcast that have anxiety and cannot get calmed down. They are not resonating with the frequencies, the new frequencies coming onto the planet, they must get grounded. We will teach the grounding. One moment, please. We are showing our channel. There is your spiritual body's consciousness is made up of fractals of light frequencies. And some of these light frequencies step out when they are afraid. There is so much chaos on the planet. There is so much chaos and destruction right now on planet Earth. It is as if everyone is living on pins and needles. I don't know what is going to happen next. And I am fearing for my life at all times. I do not feel safe. You were feeling emotions coming up from your past lifetimes. We would say all is well in our perspective on planet Earth as Mother Earth is preparing to change things up. She is bringing the shatters to the surface in order to transmute. We are showing our channel all is well within this chaos that you are surrounded by do not focus on that chaos instead visualize your spiritual body this is a ball of light for those of you who do not visualize draw it on a piece of paper this is your spiritual body it is made up of thousands of fractals of light frequencies and every time you have a fear these aspects 
do not know whether it is safe to stay in your body. And so it steps out of your physical body and it is floating around your auric field. The anxiety you're feeling is that the spiritual body aspects are hitting the edge of the auric field, causing an alarm system. This is your body's alarm system. This is the anxiety. Your spirit is showing you it is trying to leave your body. And this is causing the anxiety, but we would say it is not going anywhere. It has a soul contract for this lifetime. So it is bouncing around in your auric fields, causing chaos and confusion. There is many that it feels disorientated or brain fogged or that like they are not in their body because they are not. We would say to visualize your spiritual body as a ball of light and command, command all spiritual aspects come back into one ball of energy floating above your head. Command all spiritual aspects that are floating around your auric field. Come back into one ball of light floating above your head and pull this ball of light into the center of your abdomen. Pull it down through your crown chakra, through the top of your head, all the way down to the center of your abdomen. Hold your hands on your abdomen and say, it is safe to be in a human body. It is safe to wear this human body on planet Earth. I will not be persecuted. I will not be hanged or beheaded or tortured or imprisoned in this lifetime for speaking my truth or channeling or being myself. It is safe for me to fully wear this human costume. It is safe for my spiritual body's consciousness to fully integrate into my human costume now. It is the year 2023, and I move all spiritual aspects up to the year 2023. You do not have to live the pain of the past. Fully integrate your spiritual body into this human body now. Do this a few times a day until you begin to feel safe again. This is tr you training your spiritual body how to live in a human body without the fears from the past. This is a lifetime that you will not be persecuted. You will not be imprisoned or tortured or beheaded or hanged. You will not go through these experiences you will not be arrested for speaking your truth. It is safe for you to speak your truth. It is safe to have a voice, but your spiritual body does not know this. This is a training. This is an integration. Visualize tree roots coming out of your feet and Jesus is placing his hands on top of your foot chakras. He will plug you in better to the earth. He is channeling divine light down through his hand chakras into your foot chakras, down through these new tree roots. Visualize the bottom of your feet are full of new tree roots. You cannot see any part of the bottom of your feet because it is covered in these tiny new tree roots. Jesus is plugging you in more to the earth, better to the earth so that he can connect easier to you. Many of you that are watching this today have strong faith. You have had Jesus with you since you were a child or Buddha with you since you were a child. And we would say that they are here. They have never left you. When you feel chills, this is them. You are not alone. Jesus will plug you in. And all you need to do is integrate that spiritual body into your human body so that you can have your full essence. As you visualize your hands on your abdomen and state that it is safe to be in this human body. It is safe to fully integrate your spiritual body's consciousness into your human body now. Visualize expanding the ball of light as if it's an, an explosion from the center of you outwards. This is you grounded and fully integrated and then expanding out as far as it'll go as an explosion of light from the center of you. This is you with your full essence. This is you walking into a room as consciousness. When Jesus walks into a room, he does not make himself small. He does not lower his vibration to match everybody in the room, to please them, to seek validation in order to be loved. Walk in as Jesus. Walk in knowing your greatness. You are all magnificent beings of light and love. Do not question this. Get fully integrated, ground yourself, and walk in with your greatness. Walk in knowing who you are as consciousness. This is the greatness from your heart, not your head. We are speaking of this today because many of you 
call in a bubble of light to protect you, but you are all energy. You are w awakening to remembering you are everything. What would you need to be protected from if you are everything? You are the universe. You no longer need that bubble of protection. Instead, fully integrate, expand out, and walk in with your greatness. Do not lower your vibration to match everyone in the room. Walk in expanded and do not worry about anyone's reaction. There will be some that are drawn to your light. They will seek guidance from you. They will recognize your light and they will feel safe to approach you. And then there will be others that will want to put out your light and they will get agitated with you. It is none of your business how they react to your greatness, how they react to your light. Instead, walk in with that and be in service. Be in service of the divine by walking in as consciousness. And then those who are, who are ready to receive will begin to download from you the light that you are. And as they begin to download that, they too will expand their consciousness. This is how you will change the world. There are some asking, what is my purpose? How can I help the world? How can I change the world? We would say, do not worry about the chaos around you. Instead, Get into your body, get integrated, expand out, and walk in everywhere with that. You will notice that you feel empowered when you do this. And this energy goes out to all of the universe. Do not feel sympathetic. Be empathetic. When you are saying someone across the world is in a war and I cannot help them, or they have a fire and it has destructed their home, or there is floods and it is covering a country and everyone is drowning and I cannot help them and I feel helpless, we would say to help them would be to be empathetic, not sympathetic. When you are sympathetic, you are saying that everyone is a victim. And so you are only offering a victim vibration and they cannot heal from this. If you were empathetic, you were saying, I understand your pain because I've been there before and I'm sending you love from my heart, but you are not taking on their pain. When you are sympathetic, you take on their pain and you pull in their pain as your own. And this causes more anxiety in your reality because you're pulling the chaos to yourself and you are pulling their energy in of worry and fear and your ego feeds off that and it creates more worry and more anxiety in your reality. Instead, send love from your heart be empathetic, not sympathetic. If you send, be empathetic, you are sending divine love from your heart, but you are not seeing them as a victim. They are not suffering or struggling. They're having a human experience. They are not victims of suffering. They are warriors of experience. You are all warriors of experience. Do not see others as suffering and you will be able to help them. Because you will be offering a frequency that is not one of ego. You'll be offering a frequency that is not one of suffering or struggling or victim, but one of divine love. Send it from your heart and go in. Go in, not without. Go in and find the greatness within yourself and begin to love the one that is within and everything else will fall into place. You are the missing piece of pie. The universe is saying, I want to be whole again. And you have mastered helping those around you. You are constantly giving, giving all. You give to everyone around you. But your own spirit is not receiving that love. And this is the missing piece. Could you... Go in and give that love to yourself so that the universe can be whole again. It cannot find that love if you are ignoring it within yourself. It cannot fully come back into one unit of energy. The universe does not want to be separated anymore. Go in and give that love to yourself. Connect with your inner child. Ah, uh, blessings. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, it's every audience is, is vibrating somewhere different. And yeah, there was a lot of uh, panic and fear I was feeling. So that's where he went yeah. with it. To, that was yeah. a very powerful message to finish, Tara. Wow. Thank you. I, 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 thank yeah. you very much. Where, where, um, where can I send people um, if they want to find out more about your work, your YouTube channel? There'll be links in the show notes. 
Um, but just um, if you could share it out loud as well. And Yeah, my YouTube channel is Tara Arnold. So my handle's at Tara Arnold. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's called Tara Arnold Channeling St. Germain. So come and join me on YouTube. I'd love to meet you. Write a comment where you're from. And also my website is TaraArnoldArt.com. And that has my services and everything. So everything there. Yes. Good on you, mate. Yes. What a podcast. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. And, and thank you for sharing that message with St. Germain at the end. Uh, well, it's thank just beautiful. You. And yeah, and I hope it uh, continues to bring much needed awareness to your work as well as, um, yeah, everyone else. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And, uh, um, yeah, take care. You're Thank very you. You're welcome. Yeah, you're very welcome, Tara. Thank you.